Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Friendly Neighbor. Today it's an honor to introduce somebody who doesn't need any introduction. He's known as the magical musician from Madras. He's an educator, he's a musician, he's a writer, and he's a composer. He's not only known in India and US, but across the world. It's uh, an honor and privilege to welcome you, Kanek uh, for answer. Thank you so much, uh, Pankaj. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on the uh, this evening, there's so much to talk about uh, with you, and but but I'm I'm incredibly excited about your latest uh, composition, um, Ganga Jamuna, Rivers of India, and I know that uh, uh, this this is uh, uh, something which is uh, you have composed to be like Mile uh, uh, Mera Tamara. So please tell us a little more about this. Absolutely, thanks so much for bringing it up. Um, the video was released just about a week back. But uh, I, uh, so here's the thing. So last year I had gone to IIT for a uh, 35th reunion and uh, I produced, a, I, I composed and directed a musical production called Chitram, a portrait of India on campus. And uh, so that was quite, quite, an, quite a thing, producing it from here and then going there and actually finalizing it, and, um, uh, all, the, all the good stuff. So that set a lot of conversations on and people are, and then I, uh, one of my classmates is the executive director for the Center for Clean Water at IIT Madras. So I suggested to him, why don't we do something similar to what we have done here in the US? Like, you know, um, we have these large scale musical productions like Shanti, which uh, we have performed in Cincinnati with a cast of about 250 people and not only here, but also on the Bay Area and other places. So I was thinking of something like that for Chennai and it would be quite uh, unique to produce it there. So, and he readily agreed. And so when I came back, I started thinking about an opening piece for it. And that was the invocation, an invocation which would call out to all, um, most of the major rivers in India, almost all of the major rivers in India. And, uh, I composed this song and it had the apt beginning Ganga Yamuna. And then I started teaching it to people. I taught it to a number of choruses, but immediately the, we were hit by the pandemic, right? Like in the, in the month of March. So leading up to around, around mid-March, I taught it to uh, a choir remotely. And then uh, once the pandemic started, I still continued to teach this song via Zoom and other means with the hope that the pandemic would lift and we would actually get to perform it back in India in December, 2020. But come July, come August, the situation stayed the same. So I called my friend in IIT and said, hey, why don't we produce something virtual? And he said, yeah, let's try as, um, if we can, uh, let's do it. So that's what, that's what he said. So my vision at that point in time was, this is a powerful message that invokes the rivers from all over India. And it's very relevant to anyone from any part of India. It's very relevant to the diaspora. And it's very relevant from the standpoint of treating water as a precious resource. Um, um, so, um, so, so my thought was rather than getting it, so the, our, the original idea was to get it performed with the choir. But now we, since we were doing it remotely, my thought was, why don't we get it recorded with celebrities? So just imagine a galaxy of celebrities, one after another, singing Ganga Yamuna. And then uh, it would be like Mele Sur 
mera tumhara only thing it's many years later we don't it it's uh, and we are doing it virtually not really on doordarshan and all that and we'll have to overcome a lot of challenges because of the pandemic and all that so he agreed he readily agreed so we approached uh, a friend of mine who's who is uh, uh, her, who's who's uh, uh, sound architect and a music producer in india and uh, i we, we started working on it together and then we enrolled celebrities like bombay jayashree and kaushiki chakravarti and others and uh, we started working on it so we finished the recording um actually the recording didn't start till late last year then we finished it in december um then worked on the video so everything was done remotely so unlike the, the major productions that we had done in cincinnati which have all been local um and also in the us Uh, in in other places in the us where uh, it it's still done through phone calls but with india it it was through whatsapp and um other means and uh, a lot of virtual work particularly thanks to the pandemic but then finally the the video was released on earth day we were originally planning on releasing it during christmas but then it got <laughs> delayed so much and finally it got released released on a day i guess that's what is meant to be and uh, it has turned out very nice it's gained a lot of traction and uh, it's cr- um uh, so you can see it for yourself once you go to youtube it's uh, still being seen by a lot of people i'm hoping to sh- I, i thank you for the for the uh, opportunity to to sh- talk about it here so that it can be shared with a wider population here in cincinnati and um, um um i'm happy to talk about it more if anybody wants any more details see there's one more point that i want to make in this video this video is all about uh, not just the attitude of reverence towards rivers but also about emphasizing the need to nurture rivers because if we continue the way we are dealing with our precious resources what would happen is the kind of pollution that's happened um and the destruction of uh, of uh, water habitats and uh, drinking water supplies and just the the pristine nature of the resources is getting destroyed as you can see in the video itself and that is very 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 clearly portrayed not only using the using visuals but also through music but then um it doesn't um stop with this there is a message of hope um it is not all about despair it is about uh, what happens when um we as humanity come together and we as humanity make a resolve to uh, protect and nurture our uh, rivers and that is uh, very dramatically portrayed in the video so what i had done was i enrolled uh, a number of singers who had sung with me before um both here in cincinnati and in other parts of the world plus some of my classmates from iit um so we all they all submitted um audio and video clips and we edited those so you will find a dramatic point in the video where you will recognize a lot of familiar faces from cincinnati and elsewhere so that uh, is ganga yamuna and it's still going and there's another another video for iit madras that's in production and uh, so yeah thank you Thank you so much for sharing the details. It's it's uh, incredible, as I said earlier, and we'll be sure to share uh, the links to uh, to the video um, uh, and the composition uh, with uh, with our members and everybody here. And I'm sure there will be more questions and uh, uh, there will be more feedback uh, coming your way. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask you is that you you know you started your a uh, career as uh, uh, an engineer from uh, IIT and but now you have uh, uh, full fledged gone into the music field not only have you composed music but you have trained and uh, uh, and you know played with uh, uh, different groups throughout multiple cities in US so how did that uh, uh, transition happen uh, please tell us uh, a little more about that well it's like uh, um i came to the us in the 1980s as a grad student and i got a masters in engineering then in then an mba i was working in uh, uh technology data management and all that and then i was trained in carnatic music when i was in india now and it's after coming here that i started uh, attending concerts especially at ccm and one of the things that struck me is uh um so one of the things that struck me is um um the kind of discipline and the kind of uh uh 
coming together of people in a very organized manner in a just by design um so if you look look at the fundamentals of if if you, if you look at the uh, stage in an indian concert it's like three people performing or maybe five or six people performing and there's a lot of improvisation there's a lot of spontaneous creativity happening but in a western concert setting you see uh, written music and you see a whole group of people playing together everything is pre composed and there's a certain kind of an order which is very different and both systems are equally fascinating so one of the things that uh, uh, hit me was what would it take to create something which combined the magic of raga based music with the uh score based setup of western music so i started writing music that is based on ragas but used uh, um harmonies and then over a period of time it uh, one of my friends suggested hey can i explore and start a choir so that's when i started a choir here in 1994 so believe it or not it's been like 27 years since we had a first performance and then that led to a collaboration with another choir and it was in 2004 that i actually ventured to write a full fledged score for a choir and orchestra so we in my vision was that we needed to have 100 people on stage of indian origin singing about the 5000 year old culture of india and uh, what it stood for the message of interconnectedness and peace and at that time it, was, it seemed impossible and it may be difficult even now because uh, there's a lot of things happening in the community now uh, but at that time like in 2004 we were we got about 90 95 people from our own community to sing along with a western choir of about 50 people and then i uh, uh, there was an orchestra of about 25 30 people and we pulled all this all of this together and had a had a first performance at uc and that led to a performance at the aronoff center in a couple in a couple of years later and that led to friends of mine uh, inviting me to various other parts of the us to uh, um, come and perform but it was impossible to take 250 people from here to go and perform anywhere anywhere so we ended up building communities of singers in many different places it started in allentown pennsylvania then it we started doing it in tampa florida in fort lauderdale then um, uh uh Houston Texas Dallas and a lot of other places and all the way to the bay area in silicon valley where we performed this the very same production shanti a journey of peace um some 5 years ago i think 2016 yeah 2016 wow 5 years have passed and that was a fundraiser for uh um graduate programs in hindu studies at the graduate theological union which is affiliated with cle and then um, just a couple of years ago i did a huge production for uh, the world tamil conference which is a um, spectacular journey through tamil literature all the way from the sangam period until now so so it's an ongoing journey now because, thanks to the pandemic a lot of uh, stuff has to transcend to the virtual world so um, see you would see that it's not just in music or the arts everybody has found a way to be creative and occupied and and engaged during the pandemic using virtual resources at their disposal like for for, for many people it's the whatsapp university mm-hmm. where you get a lot of information from whatsapp we all do that my mom for example learns a lot from whatsapp and keep, keeps asking questions and we all learn, look, use look at the the uh, the the educative resources at our disposal and try to get as much of it as much as possible so we also introspect and create more we write articles we try to spread what we know we try to spread awareness and so all that is happening during this pandemic this is amazing i didn't realize that uh, you have you know put together choirs in uh, so many different cities uh, across the us uh, this must be a uh, you know huge connection for you now actually it is um actually the, the one of the biggest leaps was to the netherlands uh, a few years ago where one of my friends uh, okay. uh, invited me to, to come in build the choir there and uh, um the groundwork was done there but i was very fortunate to be able to work with the surinamese community in the netherlands and these are these are people uh, whose ancestors had left india a couple of hundred years ago uh, as indentured laborers and they worked in the caribbean and some of them migrated to holland and settled down there these were the descendants and it was a culturally a uh, totally different learning experience for us working with this group and then working with dutch musicians 
and uh, where the common language was the written score in the music uh, because dutch was their most fluent language okay. so it's so all the kind of kind of stuff so um so technology has helped us quite a lot in this process i mean if things had not evolved um tech, in the field of technology all this would not have been possible what whatever we have done in the last uh, 15 years i was curious uh, with with you bringing uh, the ragas and uh, indian classical music to uh, so many people over here and um i was wondering how did people who did not have uh, um a background in indian classical music or as much uh, they were not as familiar with uh, the ragas how did they um connect with it and how was that experience uh, teaching them yeah that's a great question question yeah see the music that i've uh, written over the years uh, is uh, essentially raga based so the core of it is based on ragas but the supporting harmonies also follow the rules of the scalar component of the ragas um see indian music is based on ragas and western music is not based on ragas and indian music does not depend on functional harmony and western music depends on functional uses functional harmony and polyphony to a great extent so i was use, able to use a lot of polyphonic elements in my music so uh, what what i mean by that is that the core of it is based on ragas and the supporting lines are also based on ragas you hear many lines sounding at the same time um and the result is um something um which at least makes me get transported to a different world every time i hear um stand on the stage and i'm surrounded by a choir and an orchestra i get transported somewhere else so now over the years we've worked with a lot of people of non uh, who are not of indian origin and uh, it's they have um enjoyed learning about the culture and they enjoyed looking at a score and singing the music so to them it's like mm-hmm. they get um something new in their own language which they are able to relate to and uh, they are able to relate to the concepts and the central message of what we are saying after all the mess the central message of everything that we are doing is in, in the in the um uh, in the realm of interconnectedness and universal peace that is really good to know and uh, um i i learned a few things along the way too and hope to uh, continue the journey and i uh, and i really uh, think a lot of other people will as well um one more question i had for you and then you know you can also um, add other parts of your experience but i was curious uh, about your journey from india to us and then uh, living in cincinnati how has that experience been the cincinnati is very different now from what it used to be um the we did not yeah. have uh, uh, we didn't have such a big indian population and uh, there were one or two couple of grocery stores and in those days even when mm-hmm. cilantro came in stock it used to be big news so unlike now where you can get virtually anything so somebody who comes in fresh from india they won't miss india at all because in terms of food you have everything in terms of entertainment everything is on youtube in terms of communication you are just a whatsapp call away from every single relative and friend of yours um and in terms of what's happening in their lives facebook tells you instagram tells you you are you are um to everyone in the world before you come so it's a different they all together um and our community has grown ours is a wonderful community there's no question about it question about it at all um and especially in the in the mason westchester area the uh, the growth of the community is uh, spectacular and they um uh there's a lot of opportunities for children to learn and stay in touch with with our culture as well as and many are doing it to reach out beyond um the uh reach up beyond the indian 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 culture and speech and use the opportunity to learn and be um of value to any community that we reside in yeah that's very interesting to know and i'm sure the uh cincinnati uh community especially uh, on the indian side has uh, changed a lot uh, over the years and i haven't been here that long so it's it's uh, really interesting to 
here's your experience of uh, being here um, and uh, um, the, some of the changes that you have seen. Um, I was uh, uh, wondering, is there anything else uh, that you uh, want to share with uh, uh, the community? We'll, we'll, of course, be sharing all the links to your videos, but is there anything else that you want our, uh, our viewers to know? Um, you can visit me on Facebook at uh, um, uh, Kanik Kanikeswaran is the name, and then I have a YouTube channel. There's plenty of videos out there of our performer performances here, okay. as well as in other parts of the world. So feel free to reach out to me if you want to uh, learn music, or if you just simply want to chat about it. If you want to have any, if you have any questions and related to theory or anything, um, I do teach some um, um, online courses on music theory and all that and you can, if you contact me I can um, give some information and um, um, I yeah I teach classes through the Hindu University of America um, online and uh, um, so please feel free to, free to contact me and um, there should be a, um, another video coming out in a few months and uh, uh, um, yeah so just waiting for the pandemic to cease so that we can uh, get together with the community, probably have some live rehearsals and perform. Each year we perform at what's called Sanger Fest. It happens in the month of December. Um, downtown, uh, sorry, and in over the Rhine in Memorial Hall. I'm not sure that it'll happen this year because things are still subdued, but uh, I, I think things will open up in 2022. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, but I'm sure we'll be in touch before. Yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you so much for the time and uh, um, and it was uh, so nice uh, speaking with you and I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be reaching out to learn more uh, and I'm sure several others uh, uh, of our viewers and uh, members from the community will as well. And uh, uh, we look forward to some of the live performances as you said. Thank you again and uh, uh, wish you all the best. Thanks, Kanek, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, Appreciate it. Bye.